Hello Year 5 and welcome back to another online learning lesson. I thought today we could do some more English work to develop your writing skills. So could you get yourself a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil and you will be making some notes today. Let's have a reminder of our spellings that came on the Monday motivation sheet this week. They were all adjectives ending in T-I-O-U-S. Can you remember how to spell ambitious? and cautious. Pause the film. And well done if you wrote ambitious and cautious. I've used those for you here in a little short story. The ambitious man was feeling rather cautious as he went out to the shops. How about the next two spelling words? Nutritious and infectious. Can you remember how to spell them? Okay, well done if you wrote nutritious and infectious. He was off to buy some nutritious food, but he was aware that the other people around him might be infectious, so he was careful and wore a mask. And finally, can you remember how to spell superstitious and scrumptious? Well done if you remembered superstitious and scrumptious. All sounding like shus, but ending in T-I-O-U-S. He knew that some people were superstitious about certain foods, but not him, semicolon. He was on the lookout for some scrumptious apples. Well done for remembering those spellings. Let's move on and think about our skills as writers. We're going to be thinking today about how we start our sentences. A few weeks ago, we looked at varying the length of our sentences. So let's use today's technique, which I'll call iSpace, and I'll explain how it works in our writing. You're going to be needing to make notes as you go along. But first, let's have a look at some pictures. Here's a bee on a flower. And over the next couple of weeks, you're going to be learning quite a lot about life cycles, including the life cycle of a flowering plant. And I'm sure you've seen lots of bees in your garden and they're buzzing around, drinking nectar from the plants and brushing um, the pollen so that it sticks to their body. And then the bees will take the pollen to the next flower and pollination will occur. Here's a picture of a bee drinking nectar through his proboscis. That's a diagram which explains pollination. I'm sure you know already that the pollen is transferred from one flower to another flower to fertilize it so that seeds can grow and the fruit can grow and the life cycle begins again. There's a lovely picture here of a bee absolutely covered in pollen. And as you get to know more about the parts of the flower, you'll understand a little bit more scientifically um, the process of pollination. OK, thinking about where bees live, you know they live in hives. Some hives do occur naturally, uh, such as the hive in the tree here. Lots of hives are managed hives, and you might have seen little wooden boxes like this, and you probably realise that they're beehives. OK, we're going to think about doing some writing today about this little guy, Barry B. Benson. You might recognise him from the animation film Bee Story. Um, but the way we're going to change our sentence starters, it's quite technical, and we're going to use this uh, method I space. I representing present participle verbs, ing starters. S representing similes. P prepositions. A adverbs. C conjunctions. And E are verbs which appear as adjectives because they are in past participle form. Now, you might want to pause the film and make a note of those because you're going to use those in your writing. Now, I'm going to ask you to think about and then make notes on some of these words that you could be using to start sentences. So thinking about verbs starting with the present participle ing. So bees, we could say we we could see them sleeping, waking, flying. Can you think of any other verbs that might be appropriate for a bee? 
Okay, well done. You might have thought of buzzing, landing, sipping, drinking, ringing, swerving, and so on. Let's have a look at S. Similes that might be appropriate for describing bees or writing about a bee. Now, remember, similes compare two things, one with another, and they use as and like. Now, I've given you some similes here. You might want to make a note of them. You might have some of your own, like a rocket, as silently as a ghost, as sticky as jam, like an imp, as quick as a flash. All of those similes could be used in your writing today. Thinking about prepositions, can you remember what they are? Yes, well done. They are words which locate things. So words such as under, on, beside. Can you think of any more? Yes, you might have thought of beneath, next to, over, inside, between. There are so many prepositions. Thinking about A is for adverbs. Now, adverbs tell us how things are happening or how verbs are happening. So quickly, slowly, cautiously, you can get phrases with purpose, with a buzzing noise and so on. You might want to make a note of those. Moving on. Oops, let me just go back one screen. Conjunctions. Now, sorry, I'm just popping between screens here. The conjunctions we're going to be using are yeah, subordinating conjunctions. Now, you remember our acronym, Subway. And I'm going to say today, let's focus on thinking about since, because, when, as, or though. So think of those as your most powerful conjunctions. This one's perhaps the trickiest, E. These are verbs used as adjectives because they show the verb in the past participle. I'll give you an example. Excited, infuriated, pushed, trapped. So it's the idea of the ED part of the past participle. Can you think of any other that might be suitable for Bs? So you might have come up with anything really, engorged, caught, exhausted, and so on. Let's move on then, because we're going to practice using this technique, I space. We're going to write about a day in the life of this little guy. We'll start the writing off here, but your task is to actually do your own piece of writing after this lesson. Sentence number one, using I the ing verb participle. Waking up bright and early, comma, Barry knew that today was going to be a good day. Now, can you see with these starters, they come before the main clause. Therefore, you're going to separate the starter from the main clause with a comma. Our next sentence, S, the simile. As quick as a flash, Barry opened and closed his wings a few times and buzzed, buzzed, buzzed out of the warm hive. Now, can you see that our main clause, Barry opened and closed his wings a few times, comes after our simile starter. Just remember, we're varying the way we start our sentences. Preposition. I've chosen beside. Beside the hive, comma, the long grass swayed in the wind and seemed to point Barry in the direction of the neighbouring flower field. Now, got quite a long main clause here. The long grass swayed in the wind and seemed to point Barry in the direction of the neighbouring flower field. But that's good because that's varying the length of our sentences. And our short prepositional phrase is portioned off or separated from this main clause with the comma. I've chosen a phrase for an adverb. Without hesitation, Barry launched himself into the air. It was a calm day for finding food and he soared upwards. Can you spot the semicolon? Yes, I've used a second clause after my main clause, Barry launched himself into the air, because I'm giving the reader a bit more information with this linked second clause, but I've still used my adverb starter. Conjunction sentence starter. As he glided through the air, comma, he spied the beautiful poppies below and dived at speed. Brackets, 
with his wings outstretched, close brackets, towards the heart of the delicate red blooms. Now I'm sure you've spotted not only the conjunction starter, which is separated from its main clause by the comma, but you've seen that I've embedded some additional information in brackets. You know how to do that. So why not think of that when you do your own piece of writing? Here's our E, our verb participle, and I've chosen exhilarated, comma. Barry landed on the rosiest of petals, which was shining in the sunlight and caught the scent of nectar in his little bee nostrils. He was ready to feed. So not only have I thought about my varied starter here, I've used commas to embed. Now, this is a relative clause, and I know that Miss Freeman did a lesson with you on relative clauses earlier in the, in the um, lockdown. And we've used a dash here to add some additional information and extend our sentence. So not only can you vary your sentence starters, you can think about playing around with all the ambitious punctuation that you know to create varied sentence structures. When you're writing your story, you might like to think of some of the really challenging times that bees face, such as heavy rain, or maybe a kitten or a cat trying to catch it, maybe falling in some water, almost drowning, or indeed the flowers drying out because it's so hot. What's going to happen in the day of the life of Barry Benson, B. Benson in your story? That's your challenge this week. Can you have a go at using this principle, the I space, to vary the way you start sentences so that you have a phrase or a subordinate clause, comma, followed by a main clause? Perhaps you'd like to add some illustrations. However you present your story, have fun. And you might like to email some of this into the office. We'd love to read it. Enjoy learning about life cycles this week, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.